Hello and welcome to the Vegan Body Revolution Show. I'm your host, Thomas Tadlock from veganbodyrevolution.com, where I show you how to achieve your ultimate dream body on a 100% plant-based diet. I want to thank you so much for tuning in today. We have a big episode, and when I mean big, Big, I mean the guest that we have on the line who's going to be sharing you his secrets to his training routine and his nutrition routine all on a vegan diet. He is right now the biggest bodybuilder that is out there. Let me tell you a little bit about him. Number one, this, uh, this big boy is from Bighorn, Wyoming. He played college ball at University of Mary in North Dakota, and he received a bachelor's degree in sports management. Now, check this out. After he graduated, he played a full season pro indoor football for a a team called the Fairbanks Grizzlies. Then shortly after that, he started his own personal training company, became the CEO and founder of Alpha Fitness in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And since then... He's been cold turkey, well, I'm sorry, he's been cold turkey vegan since Thanksgiving of 2012, and he says he's got no plans of going back to consuming animal products. Now, check this out. I'm going to give you a little bit more of his accolades. Number one, he, in 2013, he received the Personal Trainer of the Year Award by the Sun Post in Minneapolis. He placed third place in his uh, first NPC show, which was the Upper Midwest Bodybuilding Championships, competing, competing. There, I really don't know many vegans that are competing at this level. At the super heavyweight level, placed third. And then recently placed second place at the NPC Gopher Classic, again, at the super heavyweight level. So please help me welcome to the Vegan Body Revolution Show, my man, big boy, Ryan Nelson. Ryan, How are we doing today, Tom? I would say today's a very big, big day because you are on the Vegan Body Revolution Show, my friend. Oh, I'm so happy to be on, brother. So you know how we always start the show. We always find out why on earth did you go vegan? You went vegan on Thanksgiving, and I love that because what do people typically eat on Thanksgiving? How ironic, right? So why did you decide to go vegan? Well, you know, I've always been pretty open-minded, and uh, you know, my I see my I see my girlfriend. She's she's had a lot of digestive problems. Uh, since she was in her young, young teens. And so she's searched for that, that nutrition base that's going to help her with her digestive problems. And it actually uh, eventually became a vegan diet that, that helped her. And um, as I'm watching her transition into this vegan diet, I see how good she's doing with it. And I've always been open-minded and I, and I understand kind of the the easy the ease on digestion and we watch a couple documentaries together and I see what's going on out there and like which the ones being done. well one was forks over knives I know mm. for sure and I think uh, the next one I think everyone's seen that one I think the next one that really got me was uh, Earthlings that one oh yeah oh my gosh I that think one, those are that was, two must watch documentaries. Yeah, definitely uh, some pretty graphic stuff in in Earthlings, uh, but also you know good for people to see at the same time, just to know what's really going on out there. Um, so with her doing it and transitioning into it and doing so well, and the two documentaries, I said let's give it a try. And Thanksgiving 2012 was the last time that uh, I I touched animal products so since then i've been on a vegan diet and i think it's been the one of the best things i've done in my life so did you go vegan did you eat thanksgiving dinner and then go vegan or did you go vegan at thanksgiving you know what i gotta tell the truth i was down in texas at the time um my mom had bought dallas cowboy tickets for my girlfriend and i and I did have a Thanksgiving dinner down there. And when I came back uh, that weekend is when I went vegan. 
So, so that Thanksgiving was the last time you would ever eat turkey again. Yeah, that's correct. Wow. And when you watched Forks Over Knives and Earthlings, what impact did that have on you? I just, I just seen, uh, I just seen the facts going on out there and, and what was going on with the animals really, uh, that kind of re- really set it in for me when I seen, uh, when I seen the, uh, it's hard for me to talk about a little bit, but when I seen, uh, the, the cows being slaughtered and, uh, the, in the manner that it was being done, I mean, there's no way, good way of killing an animal in my opinion, but the manner that it was being carried out in, in the slaughterhouses was absolutely horrible. Did you so, not know that that's what was going on? I mean, to some extent, I did know, uh, but not to not to the cruelty that was going on in there, where they they were, you know, they actually use a rod, some of them, and stick into their temple. And they're like half dead, and they're already cutting them open and hanging them upside down, and oh, it's pretty bad stuff. And I, I grew up in Wyoming, where you know well, we farmed and ranched, and we had cattle, and we, we you know we, that we did we did butcher our own cows and stuff, but not not to this not to this level of cruelty. It didn't seem like. And so, yeah, I didn't know it was, it was that bad. And then just the, the number, the pure number of animals that are being killed out there really got me thinking, you know, look how much meat is out there in the grocery store and look how many animals that is. So that, that kind of turned, I think I knew it was going on, but I think, I think a lot of people know what's going on, but it's not something that really sets in maybe until they see something that horrific. So this was back in November of 2012. Let me try to place it. What is that? If I do the math. What is that? A year and a half ago? So it's been yeah, a year, year and, and a half, half since you've been vegan. It sounds like, tell me, correct me if I'm wrong. So you decided to go vegan for both ethical and health reasons, right? Yeah, definitely. I think at first it was a lot to do with health, um, but also the ethical. And I think as I've grown in more uh, into my vegan passion, that it's all this became a lot more about the ethical reasons. So that was I was going to ask you: Do you feel like you're a different? You're a different kind of vegan now than you were a year and a half ago. I do. I do feel like I'm a different kind of vegan. I, I've I've just observed my own experience going through this, and I've had a lot of conversations with others that a lot of folks that I know, including myself, when we first go vegan, I'm going to say for, definitely for myself, when I first went vegan, the it was for ethical reasons, but when I thought of the cruelty or when I saw the meat at the stores or when I when I saw people eating meat, especially people that I know, having dinner and having animal products, it didn't bother me as much as it does now. I'd say it haunts me now when when I see that, and it just gets worse and worse and worse. And I'm just curious to know if you've felt, uh, if you've kind of felt the same way. Same exact way. I feel tomorrow, I maybe will even feel more for animals than I do today, which seems hard because right now I... I, I feel the exact same way as you, Tom. I, it gets harder every day to see your friend eat animal products or talk about hunting or fishing or, you know, any of that stuff where the animal is going to be harmed or killed. Yeah, it's, it's, it's harder every day to see the ethical stuff behind it. I, I find myself just becoming a stronger and stronger ethical vegan. I mean, it's just... it's. I, I can't even have a conversation with my neighbor anymore because the moment he mentions fishing or hunting, I, I shut down. I, I'm, I'm pissed and uh, I, I wince my eyes. It's just I can't even be around that. Whereas before, when I was early on in the first few months uh, or even the first year of being vegan, 
I could be around that and I kind of saw that as an ex- advantage where I could have conversations with these folks and then kind of slip in my, all, you know, all the benefits of being vegan to try to start compelling them to do that. And I was pretty effective at doing that. But now my tolerance level for that is so low that, uh, that I, I just can't deal with it emotionally anymore. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that one. So is your girlfriend fully vegan too? She is. She she is actually three months ahead of me. Wow! Wow! That's great. So it looks like so you saw so you must have saw quite a transformation with your girlfriend going through I when did. she was and, going through that process, you know, huh? You know, I I don't think yeah, yeah I haven't seen females quite ever. I'm in the personal training industry. I haven't seen females quite make the physical changes ever as quick as males. Um, but certainly in digestion, she immediately has seen changes in digestion by just taking away all that hard digesting animal product food. And, and it had kind of been something that we had seen before um, as we, we, we had done a couple of cleanses where we would do just, just vegetables for a week and she would feel so good. And so I think there was a lot of little things that led us to going vegan. I mean, for instance, we had cut out dairy and gluten out of our diets for, for a, a number of years before we actually went vegan. And those were kind of little like, oh, the light kind of turned on there. Like we, we feel a little leaner. We feel a little more mentally clear. Our digestion's a little bit better. So things like that kind of turned the light on a little bit and then, Finally, we made the transition to going full-on vegan, and that's when she really started having her best digestion, and, uh, and then finally, three months later, I said, well, I better just go, go ahead and go vegan too, and, and that's, when, uh, that's when I really started to see some physical changes, and we can touch on that. It's pretty awesome. How does your family think? What what does your family think about you and your girlfriend being vegan? Um, I'm sure that that you probably had some family members too that are just totally uh, totally surprised by your switch. But uh, you know, and and again, I'm gonna just touch back on being from Wyoming, where it is very uh, meat and potatoes. A lot of them think it's it's crazy. I mean, because. I'm sure there's several stereotypes out there of, of vegans and what they look like or who they are, but um, for the most part, uh, fairly supportive. Most of them uh, will associate vegan and can't together. They, I could, I could never go vegan. I have mm, to have hear that meat, all the time. Which, yeah. So I mean, I, I get that, but they, they all, they're, they're pretty supportive. Um, and, and I think it helps too that that I'm kind of a living, walking image of of health, you know, and being bigger and strong. And being vegan really helps me out when I say, "Hey, it's working good for me. It can work good for you." Um, and I have had some luck with my mom. She she has dropped a lot of animal products out of her diet, and she'll do pretty good time to time. But I haven't fully got her to commit. I want her to. At, at times she'll do really good, and and I want her to fully commit. But um, pops, he's he's still pretty meat and potatoes, so I'll have to keep working on him. Well, when you asked, uh, well, when you said that you bet that my parents were shocked or surprised, and, and the answer is no. I mean, I have been an experimenter with my diet for as long as I've been a personal trainer, and that's fifteen years. And my parents really started becoming fans of being vegan because I used a vegan diet to literally save my father from getting full-blown diabetes and my mother from having the same thing. And we completely reversed their health, got them in perfect, perfect condition. And now we've got more energy, are lighter and more strong and happier than ever. And it was all because of a vegan oh, diet. That's so, great. It happened not too long after I personally went vegan, and then finally my father said, okay, look, I'll go on whatever plan that you will give me, 
because I've, I'm one point away from diabetes. Your mother is two points away from diabetes. I, they're both taking Lipitor for their high cholesterol. And in less than six months, we not only helped my dad drop like 40 pounds, uh, but he completely normalized his cholesterol, got off of the medications, and normalized, optimized his blood sugar levels. He's not even close to diabetes. He's actually got the best blood sugar levels that you could possibly have. So and it, so he, my parents are are now uh, they they eat 100 percent vegan. Oh, that's great. Now it's for health reasons, not ethical reasons, but uh, that's way better than what they were doing before. Absolutely, that that's awesome that you were able to do that, Tom. Yep, yep. It had a chain reaction too because then my sister noticed that, so she, uh, her, and her husband pledged to go vegan for a little while, and they did, and they. Both noticed a huge increase in their health, and that's and that's what I've seen too. And everyone that I've been able to to uh, promote and get to change over to a vegan and and just stick with it for a little while because it does take it does take a little bit at first for some to to get on board, but when I've gotten people on board, it has been amazing. I mean smiles on their face and health benefits for days. Now, what I have noticed, and maybe maybe you've noticed the same thing, you tell me, but I've noticed that the folks who go vegan and stay vegan purely for health reasons typically struggle to stay vegan a lot more than the folks that either go vegan because of ethical ve- ethical reasons or become ethical vegans after they go vegans. Have yeah, my that? roommate. Yeah, your roommate. Yeah, yeah, I I do see that a little bit. I mean, uh we've we've pretty much transitioned in in into a plant-based diet, but uh but he still will every once in a while bridge outside that and have a piece of fish or something like that. So, and it, and it's not it's it's not for ethical reasons for him. It's strictly for health benefits. So, um, yeah, I have seen that. I know I know what you're saying there. And he still will hunt some. I find um, a really effective strategy that I've been using is getting people into the vegan diet because they want to look better and feel better about themselves. Because I've noticed that. When it comes to health and avoiding being sick, most people kind of put that a little on the low side on their priority list. But yeah. I've also, but I've I've noticed that people will switch their diet at the blink of an eye if they think it's going to help them get a six pack or make them look sexier or fit into a skinnier pair of jeans. They will do that in a second. They don't even care what they're eating as long as it gives them the results. And so once, I mean, so here you are, you're in a perfect position for that. You're a personal trainer, you're ripped out of your bejesus, you competed at a super heavyweight level. Once, uh, once I get them into being vegan, then both my wife and I, we double team on it. We start sending a flood of information showing them all the ethical benefits of being vegan, like how they're bettering the planet, how they're saving animals, how they're creating, you know, stopping suffering, how they're no longer a part of the all that the bad factory farming and stuff like that. And we've been able to help people go ethical about at a rate of about fifty percent using that strategy. You ever had um, any experiences like that? Um, as far as ethical reasons, I, I haven't pushed the ethical stuff on people as, as much maybe as you have, but, uh, definitely, definitely from my girlfriend and I's perspective, um, definitely all about the ethical stuff. Uh, but I do try to, uh, consistently promote the ethical stuff. Um, but I'd have to agree that that a lot of people are much more willing to jump on board for six-pack abs. Yeah. What I found works really well is once they're vegan, then start delivering the the ethical message, but only promoting the benefits, not shaming or anything like that. 
I, yeah. find, I find that if I start off a conversation with someone who's not vegan with ethical, I've already lost them. I've lost them like the moment I open my mouth. <laughs> yeah, you'll find uh, a lot of times, at least I find a lot of times, that you will almost immediately strike people in the wrong way if you start out with ethical stuff. So, so you know, talking about on the topic of having this insane body and helping people go vegan because they want to look like you or lose fat or gain muscle faster and better and healthier than everybody else, let's talk about what you've been able to do. So, give me a little a little bit of a rundown. So, back in back in 2012, Thanksgiving, this is right before you went vegan. Were you as big and as strong and muscular as you are right now? You know, I, I've actually, um, I've been bigger in weight, but not in development, I, sh- I would call it. Um, I'm much leaner now, but still at around the same weight that I've been at. For probably the last three years, I've been a- between, I've actually got up to 272 at my biggest point. Wow. And... And down to 225, 220 ish area. So I've been in between that range for the last three years, three, four years. And how years. tall are you? 6'4. Um, 6'4. Six, four. Six, four. You're a big boy. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I've, I would say over the last year and a half since I've been vegan, um, leaner, but maintained a weight. So, added muscle and and lost fat and and uh, normally just tell you the first three weeks that i went vegan um i dropped probably three or four percent body fat and and being a personal trainer i'm sure you know to drop that amount of body fat in three weeks is almost unheard of I do it all the time and i wasn't i wasn't overly i wasn't overly high in body fat percentage before this and and I, I usually walk around at a five to seven percent body fat just every day, not competition, not competition even ready. So um, to drop three to four percent from eight, seven, eight down to that five area is is pretty pretty awesome. Um, that yeah, that's about. I'm, I'm just doing. I'm, I'm calculating right now. That's about ten pounds of pure fat. Like assuming you're around two hundred fifty pounds. That's about ten pounds of pure fat in three weeks. I think I went from, I think I went from like two twenty nine at the time at those first three weeks. I think I went from two twenty nine to two twenty three, somewhere around, somewhere right around there. And then since then, I've built up in size. Wow. Okay. So then that would mean, that would mean that so two twenty nine to two twenty three is a six pound difference. That means that you. Your body fat went down by ten pounds. Your muscle mass went up by four pounds. Yeah, yeah, and then and then the first three weeks, I I didn't see the muscle mass change like that, but I I did see the fat loss. I put the calipers to it beforehand, and after, and the scale, and yeah, it was a, it was a six pound fat loss in those first three weeks, is what it was. Um, well, and 10, pounds. Then, yeah. 10 pounds, 10 uh, pounds, if it was, the last years. if it was three to 4%, that's 10 pounds of fat lost yeah. and, and four yeah. pounds of lean mass gained. Yeah, it was a, uh, it was uh, an excellent, dude, that's an excellent trend. That's awesome. those and did first you, three weeks is when it really made sense to me. Like, okay, this makes sense why I'm doing this now. And did you like, did you do any changes to your training during that time? Um, no training stayed the same. So the only change was the diet. Strictly diet. Wow. That's incredible. And where did you learn how to put together your diet? A lot of experiments. And and I'll tell you, uh, at first, I was eating a lot more fruit than I was now. I don't know if you've heard of 80-10-10 before, maybe. I've heard of it. I, I know a lot yeah. of people that, uh, that that follow that. Is that what you did? So, so at first, uh, I did, I did, I ate a lot. I mean, I can't say I was exactly 80, 10, 10, because I did add, uh, protein powder in, in with it. 
Um, and then also I would do cooked meals in the evening time where I would do beans, rice, lentils, split peas. So not exactly 80, 10, 10, but are those, well, are those not on, books. are those like not supposed to be on the list? <clears throat> Usually on Douglas Graham's 80, 10, 10, uh, you won't eat cooked food, but it's just, it's usually 80% carbohydrates, 10% fat, and 10% protein. Uh-huh. Now, my levels were not 80, 10, 10 quite. You know, I think my carbohydrates were a little lower. My protein was a little higher. But, yeah, low fat, um, high fruit diet. At uh, one time, I was eating 52 bananas a day. And you dropped three to four body fat percentage points in three weeks doing and that? I was drop, and I was dropping body fat like <laughs> crazy. That is awesome. And how many days a week were you working out at the time? Uh, I'm sure it was five. I'm sure it was every bit of five. I've always been pretty active. And then were, were you were, how long would you work out per uh, workout? My workout is probably about an hour and a half. About 90 minutes? It's cool. Mm-hmm. It's really, really cool. And then, and then, did your diet uh, kind of evolve over time? So, so yeah. And in continuing on, my diet has evolved. Um, so, just like you, I've experimented with diet over the last year and a half a lot. And uh, so, at the time, my my protein levels were fairly low. Like I said. Um, actually down into the 75 to 100 grams of protein a day, which most people would be in awe and their eyeballs would be popping out if they heard protein levels were that low. But, um, (laughs) excuse me, I've found that higher protein levels in bodybuilding um, really, it it really has made a big difference with the higher protein level Mm. for me. So um, added more cooked food in, dropped a lot of the fruit out um, and and found and found that the higher protein levels and building muscle really go hand in hand together so yeah my diet has evolved a lot more into the higher protein diet uh, lower lower carb diet and what about your training has that changed at all since uh, back in 2000 at the end of 2012 yeah, so right now I follow a little a little different training regimen, uh, kind of unique to myself. Uh, in the morning, I'll typically do. And we will, let's we'll we'll sa- let's save uh, we'll save the details. Okay, for it, but I'm, I'm just curious. Details. Like, yeah, we'll we'll go into that it in another has, episode. It has changed some. Yeah, it has changed some. So, like, what what are you doing? What or what's the result that you're trying to achieve? More muscle mass or more fat loss or? Yeah, I go for uh, I go for a little bit more muscle mass now. Just trying to gain size more now. Gain As size. As before, I was more kind of into uh, high intensity. I would call it. Got it. So when you said high intensity, like, are you talking about like high intensity interval training? Interval training, yeah. Where I, I would, you know, I I wouldn't call it CrossFit, but I would call it. Uh, you know, intervals where I would move from one exercise right into the next and then come back and, and go through it, you know, three or four rounds. Boom, 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 boom. Not much rest. Hmm. Awesome. Awesome. And then, like, for, you know, how lean do you stay off season? Because I saw pictures of your bodybuilding show. You were, just, you were so ripped. I mean, you had your body fat percentage down so low. Uh, it was super impressive. You were veined out everywhere, freaking eight pack and striations all over the place. How close to that are you year round? So I probably am not quite that lean year round, but uh, I walk around at the five to six percent uh, body fat year round, uh, 200, 245, 250 pounds. Pretty easily too. I mean, I'm not a I'm not at all a junk food vegan eater. I don't touch the processed food too much. Pretty much stick strictly to the whole foods. Um, and yeah, I walked around at five or six percent, happy vegan smile on my face all the time. Wow. <laughs> wow, whole foods. So so that means like 
no pasta, no bread, and no pasta or bread. And you know, if I if I am gonna have something like that, a lot of times I'll just make it. Um, there there there's a lot of cool techniques out there, and I'm really big into cooking. So we have like a spiralizer at the house here that you can throw a zucchini on and spiralize and make noodles out of that. So love that. There's ways around it, you know. Wow. All right, that's that's really impressive. I want to know all about how you pull that off. I mean, to to be off season five to six percent body fat at two hundred fifty pounds on a on a. I mean, I guess aside from protein powder, are you still taking protein powder? Yep, still do a protein powder. Usually, yeah. So, uh, so I, I guess that would be like what one of the only processed things that you you take in with uh with your. Yeah food so besides that to do it mostly whole foods i mean that's impressive i mean you must be putting down like an entire farm a day in produce <laughs> yeah a lot of food the grocery store uh likes it they smile when i walk in sweet well here's what i want to do ryan over the next few episodes because we're gonna we're gonna kind of complete this one uh, in the next episode, I want to go over your your whole diet. We'll go through an entire day of eating. I want to know everything that you eat and uh, and what your what your dieting strategies are for staying so damn lean and building some serious muscle. And I would also like to to kind of get some insight on what do you do pre competition to get as freaking lean as you possibly can with your diet. And then in the episode after that. Let's go and do the same thing, but with your workout. Does that sound cool? Sounds good to me. All right. Awesome. Now, before we go, uh, Ryan, how do people contact you? Because I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, there's going to be a lot of people that want to learn how to get as big as you and stay as lean as you on a vegan diet because you do, you're like a walking Hulk, man. It's, it's freaking cool. So how do people get in touch with you? Well, email is good. Uh, you can always give me a phone call too. Okay, so so I'm gonna I'm gonna obviously put that up on the description of this episode and on the Vegan Body Revolution website. But could you go ahead and announce that? Yeah, Alpha Fitness A L P H A Alpha Fitness dot com. Excuse me, Alpha Fitness at AOL dot com. Uh, phone number is three zero seven seven five one. Eight five six seven. All right, perfect. Very very good. So we're gonna wrap it up right there, Ryan. We'll see you on the next episode, folks. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, I hope you're looking forward to the next episode where we're gonna be going over Ryan's complete diet and diet strategies for maintaining five to six percent body fat. How would you love to be at five to six percent body fat? and being a whopping 250 pounds of solid muscle all year round. I can't wait to find out about that. We're going to go into his pre-competition dieting strategies too. So for those of you who want to get extra super rip, you got to tune to the next episode. And then we'll go into his workout after that for the uh, following episode to complete this series. So I hope you enjoyed it. In fact, if you have enjoyed this episode and you feel that it deserves five stars, can you do us a huge favor and go to iTunes and leave us a review, a five-star review. It helps us get ranked higher on the search engines and more people can find this incredible vegan body transformation informa- uh, transform- transforming information. And speaking of body transformation, if you have not already, make sure that you download your very own copy of the Vegan Muscle Book. Go to veganmusclebook.com where I show you how I gained over 10 pounds of solid muscle in just 28 days eating just three meals and doing only four basic exercises. You can get that free right away. And join in on the conversation that's already happening right now on Facebook. Go to facebook.com slash vegan body revolution and i want to also announce too if you haven't gone to the facebook group make sure that you get there because i just we just launched our the very first in the world of its kind the very first 10-day vegan tummy tightener program when we launched this program uh we used uh i used 65 different case study subjects 65 of them and get this 
the average inches lost off of the waist was 2.2 inches in just 10 days. The highest inches lost off of just the waist was four inches. And yes, that's in 10 days. And the number of people who didn't get any results at all was just one. One out of 65 didn't get any results. And then the lowest, I forgot to tell you, the lowest inches lost was a half of inch. And if you take that half inch loss in 10 days, that's 1.5 inches off of the waist in a month. And you can do it over and over. So that's now available. Go to veganbodyrevolution.com to check that out. Learn more about it. I want to thank you again for tuning in. My name, again, is Thomas Tadlock, host of the Vegan Body Revolution show. And I will catch you on the next podcast.